Okay, welcome everyone to this introduction to tropical geometry. What is tropical geometry part one? Which will be a self-contained, well, and very biased, well, kind of account of what I think is a good way to introduce tropical geometry to you, which is kind of a fun thing to do. Tropical geometry is a combinatorial shadow, if you want, of algebraic geometry. Um, you can also see this as a continuation of an algebraic geometry class. So in any type of algebraic geometry situation, I would like to see, like to have the reader seen tropical geometry, which you can really call modern algebraic geometry if you want. Uh, many of the modern branches of algebraic geometry. And kind of kind of address where that comes from, where this analogy comes from um, as we go along, uh, actually today already. Uh, let me just comment, just to get it out of the way, on the absolutely terrific best name ever tropical geometry so whenever you tell someone about tropical geometry and they haven't seen it they get really interested because it kind of sounds really good so if you come up with a name please make it sound good it actually helps a lot um turns out that the word tropical essentially means nothing uh so it's just a really good name so the history of the subject here is a little bit explained on the wikipedia page and essentially the adjective tropical, yeah, which makes the whole thing so beautiful. Tropical geometry sounds very fancy, sounds very nice, sounds, sounds like something I would like to learn. Um, yeah, tropical mathematics, yeah. It was apparently contributed by French mathematicians who think of Brazilian uh, or Brazil as being tropical and it was in, in honor of a Brazilian computer scientist. So that's where the tropical comes from. There's no mathematical meaning or whatever. It's just, it's just a really good choice of word. Although you might, uh, well, Brazil equals tropical. I don't know. But anyway, it's a, it's a really good choice. Yeah. I say it again. Whenever I tell someone about uh, tropical geometry, oh, that's a top. That's a part of mathematics, which is tropical geometry. They're like, what is that? Right. It sounds sounds really good. Um, what it's really all about is, as I said, is like a combinatorial shadow of algebraic geometry and um, essentially if you write a research proposal in tropical geometry very often it just or you google them and you read them online very often it just reads like here's algebraic geometry theorem a and i want to like to find the tropical version of it so tropical geometry algebraic geometry essentially the same and so we run through it uh, essentially in the same way as we went through algebraic geometry. If you haven't watched the algebraic geometry videos I made, it doesn't matter. This is kind of self-contained. So tropical geometry is fun on its own. You don't need to know algebraic geometry. Essentially, you don't need to know a lot. You should have seen some form of advanced mathematics to be able to follow it, but not too much. You can actually just do it mostly from, from scratch, either like really on a vacuum or in a vacuum. So starting with the vacuum. Still, the motivation is algebraic geometry, so I should tell you a little bit about algebraic geometry. So algebraic geometry, always AG uh, in this class, is essentially, well, geometry turned into algebra, um, if you want, or just algebra, modern one, the modern version in quotation marks is really just algebra if you want. And it's just about solving, or not solving, but discussing the sets of zeros of polynomial equations. And that's not very interesting if you have one variable because it's just a number of points somewhere. But if you have two variables, it gets or more variables, it actually gets very exciting. So here, this equation which contains uh, this number e, and e is <laughs> e is not two point something. E is a variable here that I can specialize. E x zero, or whatever. Um, you run through zero sets of this polynomial down here. Yeah. So you just bring y squared on the other side, then there is a zero equals, so it's a zero set. And this runs through the conic section. So we have a circle, we have an ellipse, we have a parabola, and a hyperbola. So these are kind of the standard examples of, uh, so let me try to do this. Circle is this guy, uh, ellipse is this person here, uh, the parabola is this mate here, and uh, whatever, the hyperbola is my best friend down here in green. So the conic section plus kind of standard examples of algebraic geometry. Yeah, the problem when you study algebraic geometry is, sure, polynomials are everywhere. Zero sets of polynomials sounds something reasonable to study, 
But it turns out this is in fact really difficult. So most computational algebraic geometry is like using usually a lot of algorithms that are kind of very slow. It's another way of saying that this is like a really difficult problem. There are a lot of open questions in algebraic geometry. Just think about Fermat's last theorem, which is essentially an algebraic geometry question if you want. Um, yeah, and still proof of it is not nothing I would like to present. I actually would like to present it in a video, but I have no idea how to really condense it into something reasonable in a video. So difficult, eh? very difficult. So what can you do if you have something very difficult? One strategy is to just give up. Perfect. I do that all the time. If I see a difficult problem, I just don't touch it. Um, other people are much more persistent, much smarter, much more intelligent, whatever you want to say, I don't care. And they just say, okay, reformulate the problem. Usually I would say reformulating a problem doesn't really solve it, right? An equivalent problem just reformulated. Very often it's just, if it was difficult before, it's still difficult. It's an equivalent problem. The tropical geometry is not just a reformulation, an equivalent reformulation, but it's kind of a smart, different perspective on the same topic without being equivalent. Yeah? So very similar, very related. You ask the same questions, but it's not equivalent. So a priori, it doesn't have any reason to be not, uh, difficult or easy, right? It's not equivalent to algebraic geometry and you can still go back and forth between uh, the two. So it's kind of the best thing you can actually pull off out of such a situation. If you just do something which looks similar in spirit, but it's not the same, so you get similar results that you might be able to push back and forth. Right? You get a very different strategy, you have very different things you can say, and instead of algebra, you really translate geometry now into combinatorics, and you see objects of this form which we'll, we'll see throughout this series. So this is now a curve, yeah? and this is a higher degree thing, and a curve, the curves with a lot of edges and uh, very piecewise linear. So essentially, if you want, then tropical geometry, by the way, always TG, uh, will be a piecewise version, a piecewise linear version of algebraic geometry. And kind of the fun thing is, you could kind of already see that. Um, so this is a zero set now. So before here, zero sets were more like smooth things, like circles, ellipses, something. And now zero sets are those uh, very singular things with a lot of edges, um, like more like a graph if you want, like a piecewise linear, and they have an inherited combinatorial structure. So here, algebra, uh, here, combinatorics. Uh, so it offers somehow a simplification for studying algebraic geometry. That's kind of the promise of tropical geometry. And then it kind of developed into its own field um, because of various but it looks already like computer graphics to me, right? <laughs> like various potential applications of uh, the theory. But really, I would like to think of it as like a combinatorial version of algebraic geometry. But keep in mind, not equivalent, some are running in parallel. So one might be difficult, one might be easy sometimes. Um, and you can just kind of uh, play kind of from one to the other, right? So you can kind of play one against the other. That's kind of a really cool idea, actually. And it came up roughly, yeah, well, it came up before, but roughly like the 1990s. So it's actually a really new field of mathematics if you compare it to integration or something. <laughs> so kind of a new thing. Uh, pretty popular nowadays. And the standard reference I'm following in this lecture course, so more references and everything else is in the description. I pack a lot of things in the description. Uh, so the standard reference, which I really like, which was freely available when I made this video, so the freely available link is also in the description. It might not be freely available anymore if you look it up. Uh, of course, times change, but it is this introduction to tropical geometry. Yeah. It's a, a version from 2009, but you know, the field is not moving much. I mean, it's an introduction. The field is moving very fast, actually, but the introductory part is not moving all that fast, I guess. So that's the main source. As I said, everything else, like more and more and more, the things to click on, uh, whatever are in the description. So tropical geometry, also where I got the pictures from, is all, all in the description. So tropical geometry is this combinatorial version of algebraic geometry.
or piecewise linear, or whatever you want to call it, actually. And the question, how much in parallel do they actually run? Non-trivial at all, but there's a lot of intersection, which kind of makes this, this whole clock tick, it makes, it makes this thing going here, is why this is interesting. So the fascinating thing is also, one of them is Comentorex and one of them is Algebra. They still have so much in common that essentially you should think of there's an algebraic geometry theorem and there's a tropical analog and there's a tropical geometry theorem and there's an algebraic geometry analog. You kind of can play from one side to the other. A Bezu's theorem, let's just say uh, a circle, a, a line intersects our, our friends from here. Let me just do that in two points, generically at least. Mm, yeah, that was a really bad cut. So if I cut a line, it, that was not much better. Let me try again. If you cut a line here, you end up with two points generically. So if you want a statement that is completely precise, you need to go projective geometry, but let's not do that. Let's just say generically. If you cut this generically, if you cut this generically, if you cut this, whatever, generically, something like that, you always have two intersection points. And what you see here it's a d degree one polynomial, a line, and a degree two polynomial, uh, a conic section. So that's kind of true in general. And in tropical geometry here, you have a degree one polynomial in tropical geometry or the zero set. And here you have whatever, this, this the, the red thing is degree two. So uh, degree two, and they again intersect in, in two points. Uh, it's kind of the same type of, type of theorem. And there's an operation which is called tropicalization and an inverse, which is called detropicalization. And they just go between one of them. And it's, it's really fantastic how you actually can not just see analog statements in tropical geometry, but you can also use a tropical version sometimes to prove the algebraic versions, which you should usually think of algebraic geometry is more difficult than tropical geometry, which is like 95% true. Some parts of tropical geometry are actually more difficult than algebraic geometry, but somehow in general, the flavor should be tropical geometry easier than algebraic geometry. Okay, kind of make it clear. And kind of the fun tropical geometry, I said again, uh, let's pull it up again here. So around since the 1990s, that's not a long time. And it already has some fun, many implications actually. Um, one of the most f f favorite examples is the Dutch rail wheel network and was proposed to be optimized. So essentially, well, let's have a look at the varieties again. Sorry, the zero sets that we see here, they look like very piecewise linear. And so they will play a role in there. Um, they will play a role in some form of optimization processes. So tropical geometry is really kind of important in parts of optimization. And well, also our little Dutch railroad network looks a little bit like it's piecewise linear and you can actually Kind of try to optimize it using um, tropical geometry. So kind of trying to optimize the Dutch railway network using tropical geometry. So I will like, explain how in one of the later videos how those applications of tropical geometry arise via optimization in this case. Um, another branch of well that we're going to explore later and this 5% where tropical geometry is actually more difficult. There are some things in tropical geometry, they are very difficult. Solving tropical equations, which is like the tropical analog of a algebra equation, is somehow really difficult. It, you can make a very precise statement. It's very, very difficult, which gets people working in cryptography very excited because cryptography is this kind of slightly weird field, cryptography, right? You want to kind of uh, cipher and decipher some messages to make them unreadable. Your email should be safe. So co people in cryptography are kind of very strange people because they like things that are difficult. Everyone else just like things that are easy, but uh, <laughs> researchers working in cryptography, they like things that are difficult. Turns out that tropical cryptography, so cryptography based on what we will see in the next video, the tropical semi-ring is very promising actually, and there's a big field of cybersecurity right now. This is another type of application I will discuss in this theory. So kind of the point of this video series is to learn topical geometry together and have a look on its manifold applications, 
not just in algebraic geometry itself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.